Folks, have you ever thought about what happens when everything goes dark? I mean, really dark. No lights, no internet, no nothing. That's what we're facing with an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. It could happen any day now, and I'm here to tell you, it's going to be big. But don't worry, I've got the inside track on what's going to be worth more than gold after this disaster hits. Are you ready to find out the 10 things that'll make you king of the new world? When talking about things that are going to be worth their weight in gold after an EMP hits, solar panels are right at the top of the list. If an EMP comes our way, be it from a massive solar flare or a nuke going off way up in the sky, our power grids could get knocked out cold. That's because EMPs throw out a ton of electromagnetic radiation that can fry electronics and mess up electricity transmission. But here's where solar panels shine. Thanks to how they're built and the materials they use, they're pretty tough against EMPs. While everything else might be going dark, solar panels could keep on trucking, keeping the lights on when you need them most. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The actual solar cells are tough, but the parts that make a solar panel system work, like the gadgets that change solar power into usable electricity, can get zapped by an EMP. This means your setup might not work as well or could even stop working if those parts get damaged. So, if you're thinking ahead, you'd want to have some extra parts on hand or know how to protect your gear from an EMP. Protecting your solar setup from an EMP could mean a few things, like unplugging stuff when you're not using it, wrapping key parts in protective cages that block EMPs, think superhero shield but for electronics, or putting in devices that keep power surges from frying your system. How you set up and protect your solar panels can make a big difference in how well they ride out an EMP. Despite these hurdles, solar panels are like a beacon of hope if an EMP ever hits. They can keep generating power even when the rest of the grid is down for the count. This makes them a key player in keeping things running and giving you a bit of independence and security when it might feel like the world's turned upside down. Number 2. Blankets and warm clothing In the aftermath of an EMP, the importance of blankets and warm clothing cannot be overstated, particularly due to the potential loss of electric heating systems. An EMP, capable of disabling electrical and electronic devices over a vast area, would likely result in a prolonged period without the conveniences of modern heating technology. This makes blankets and warm clothing not just commodities, but essential items for survival, especially in colder climates where temperatures can plummet, posing a significant risk of hypothermia. Blankets, specifically emergency blankets, offer more than just warmth. They can be used in various ways to aid survival, such as creating makeshift shelters or capturing and retaining body heat in severe conditions. These blankets, often made from mylar, are designed to reflect body heat back to the user, providing crucial warmth without the need for external power sources. In addition to the direct benefits of warmth, the psychological comfort provided by blankets and warm clothing during times of stress and uncertainty can also not be underestimated. The ability to stay warm and somewhat comfortable can help maintain morale and mental health in challenging post-EMP environments. Moreover, the utility of blankets extends beyond just personal warmth. They can serve as protection against the elements, improvised carriers, or even as a base for signaling for help. The adaptability of blankets in survival situations makes them invaluable, further emphasizing their importance alongside warm clothing in post-EMP scenarios. Thus, preparing for an EMP event involves not just electronic and food supplies, but also ensuring you have adequate means to stay warm. Number 3. Books Books will become indispensable tools for information, education, and entertainment stepping into roles that were largely filled by digital platforms before the disruption. An EMP's potential to knock out electrical grids, communication networks, and electronic devices would thrust society back to a reliance on physical media for knowledge and leisure. Books, in their traditional non-electronic form, would not be affected by the electromagnetic waves of an EMP, making them reliable sources of information and a means to maintain educational practices when electronic devices fail to operate. The significance of books in a post-EMP scenario extends beyond mere sources of information. In the absence of the internet and electronic forms of communication, printed materials would be vital for learning new skills necessary for survival, from basic first aid techniques to advanced knowledge on agriculture and mechanical repairs. Books on local flora and fauna, for example, could become essential guides for foraging, 
while manuals on mechanical repairs could provide the knowledge needed to fix essential machinery without the assistance of online tutorials or digital manuals. Moreover, in the rebuilding and recovery phases following an EMP event, books could serve as crucial reference points for community planning, sharing resources, and restoring some semblance of normalcy and structure in society. As communities come together to assess damage, rebuild infrastructure, and restore essential services, printed guidelines and manuals could facilitate the dissemination of knowledge and best practices, enhancing community resilience and cooperation. Entertainment and mental well-being would also be served by books in a world without electronic amusement. Fiction, literature, and poetry could offer escapism, comfort, and a sense of normalcy amidst the chaos, supporting mental health and community bonding through shared stories and experiences. Additionally, the shift back to traditional forms of communication and information sharing would necessitate a revaluation of books as educational tools. In the absence of digital resources, Teachers, parents, and individuals would turn to textbooks and educational materials in print to continue learning processes and intellectual development. This reversion to physical books for education would underscore the importance of libraries, personal book collections, and community sharing of resources to ensure access to knowledge for all age groups. Number 4. Bullets and Guns Firearms and ammunition would become invaluable assets for several reasons. First and foremost, an EMP caused by either a nuclear explosion or a massive solar event would likely knock out electrical grids and disable many electronic devices. However, firearms and ammunition are immune to the direct effects of an EMP. This resilience makes them critical for hunting and defense in a scenario where food supplies could be disrupted, and law enforcement and military capabilities might be hampered. Hunting becomes a vital means of securing food when conventional supply chains are broken. Firearms, particularly those suitable for small game such as 22 LR rifles, would be essential as big game might become scarce due to overhunting and the need to rely more heavily on available small game. For defense, the importance of firearms and ammunition cannot be overstated in a post-EMP scenario. In the absence of a fully operational law enforcement infrastructure, protection against looters or hostile entities becomes a primary concern for survivors. Firearms provide a means of defense and deterrence in such unstable environments. Furthermore, the need for firearm maintenance and repair would emphasize the value of having a stockpile of essential parts such as spring kits, pin kits, firing pins, and extractors. These components are most likely to break and would be critical for keeping firearms operational over the long term. Knowledge of firearm maintenance and repair, possibly from pre-EMP preparations such as watching instructional videos, would be invaluable for ensuring the longevity of these defense tools. Number 5. Candles and Lighters Folks, let's talk about what happens when the lights go out for good, after an EMP knocks out all our electric grids. That's when candles and lighters turn from everyday items into survival gold. Imagine it. No power, no streetlights, and no electric heating. It's not just about stumbling around in the dark. It's about staying safe, warm, and sane, when the world as we know it flips upside down. Candles are a no-brainer. They're easy to stock up on, they don't need any fancy tech to work, and you can light up a room with just a few. Sure, they're not as bright as your overhead lights, but in a world without electricity, they're the difference between darkness and the light. Just remember, with open flames comes the need for extra caution. Fire safety can't take a back seat, especially when emergency services might not be a quick call away. Now let's talk lighters. They're your trusty sidekick in lighting those candles, sure, but think bigger. Cooking, staying warm, or even sending up a signal. Lighters are about to become your best friend. Forget those disposable ones. You'll want something that lasts, something you can refill. When matches run out and there's no power for those electric sparkers, a good sturdy lighter is worth its weight in gold. Don't get me wrong, candles and lighters are just the start. We're also eyeing kerosene and propane lamps for a brighter burn. And let's not forget chem lights for those moments when you need a quick, safe light source. Each option has its place in your survival kit, from bright, steady light to safe. Use anywhere glow. For those of you thinking ahead, yes, protecting some electronic gadgets from EMPs with Faraday cages is smart. But let's face it, in the chaos of a post-EMP world, your best bet is going back to basics. It's all about planning, preparing, and having the right tools at your fingertips. 
Number six on the list of what's going to be super valuable if we ever get hit by an EMP. Cash and precious metals. When that EMP hits and messes up all our electronic stuff, including the banking system and all those online money transfers, the worth of good old cash and shiny metals like gold and silver is going to shoot through the roof. History. And folks who know a lot about this stuff tell us that when you can't swipe a card or transfer funds online, having something you can hold in your hand becomes the way to go. Take it from someone like Selko, who's been through the ringer in the Balkan War and knows what it's like to live in a city cut off from the world. He says at the beginning of any disaster, you might still be able to use cash for buying what you need. But as time drags on and things don't get any better, gold and silver are going to be your best friends for trading or buying the big stuff. However, right after an EMP hits, don't expect to be trading your gold bars for a loaf of bread. Immediate needs are going to be food and medicine. But as things start to settle and we begin to rebuild, those precious metals will be worth their weight in gold. Literally. This whole EMP scare has people talking about how to protect their electronics too, showing just how serious the threat is to our day-to-day -day life and the systems we rely on. Makes a strong case for having physical stuff. Stuff that won't fry when the electronics do and can be used to trade or hold onto wealth. And it's not just about gold and silver either. When we're talking about what's valuable in a world turned upside down by an EMP, think about the basics too. Food that'll keep, medical stuff, things to keep you clean, and ways to stay warm and see in the dark. All of these are going to be hot commodities in a post-disaster world, showing that when you're prepping, you've got to think about more than just the bling. Number seven, food and water. When we talk about being ready for anything, especially something as catastrophic as an EMP strike that could knock out all power in a flash, the bread and butter of your survival plan literally comes down to food and water. An EMP isn't just some sci-fi scenario. It's a real threat that could leave us in the dark, messing up everything from the grocery supply chain to our water cleanliness systems. Suddenly, that tap water you rely on and the local grocery store could be out of the picture for a long, uncertain time. That's why having your own stash of grub and clean water isn't just smart, it's essential. You'll want at least a three-day supply to cover you short-term, but if you're really looking to play it safe, and you should, aim for a stash that'll last you two weeks or more. We're talking non-perishable goods here. Think canned food, dry beans, pasta, rice, and those freeze-dried meals that can sit on a shelf for ages without going bad. And water? You gotta have at least a gallon per person per day. Bottled water is a good go-to because it's easy to store and carry around if you need to move fast. Don't forget about keeping that water clean either. Having a way to filter or purify it is just as crucial as the stockpile itself. You don't want to survive an EMP just to get knocked down by bad water. Experts and folks who've lived through disasters will tell you, clean drinking water and enough food to last are your first line of defense in any emergency, including EMP fallout. But surviving that initial hit is just the start. You've also got to think about how you'll keep safe, communicate, and keep some lights on without the grid. It's about more than just making it through. It's about maintaining some level of normal life when everything else is upside down. So, yes, food and water are your survival staples, but they're just part of a bigger plan to keep you and yours safe no matter what comes your way. Number 8. Painkillers and Medicines When we're talking about getting ready for something as big as an EMP hitting, we got to talk about one of the most critical supplies— meds, including those painkillers we all reach for when things get tough. Here's the deal. After an EMP blast, getting your hands on both prescription meds and the stuff off the shelves like antibiotics and painkillers is going to get a whole lot harder. Why? Because while these meds are tough enough to withstand an EMP, the chaos it'll cause means they'll be as rare as hen's teeth. Now, with hospitals and clinics likely knocked out of commission, those of us who've had the foresight to stock up on these essentials will not only be able to keep ourselves and our families in good shape, but will also have the means to help out others in need. So what should you be piling up in your stash? Well, for starters, make sure you've got plenty of acetaminophen, Tylenol, acetyl salicylic acid, aspirin, and ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil, on hand. These basics will help manage everything from aches and pains to fevers. Don't forget about benzocaine for those sudden toothaches and naproxen for tackling headaches and swelling. The amount you need to keep back? That depends on how many folks you're looking out for. 
But the golden rule here is to have enough to keep you going when getting more just isn't an option. Number 9. Personal Hygiene Items Alright, let's talk about something super important for when things go sideways. Like after an EMP hits. Keeping yourself clean. Now you might be thinking, with everything else going on, why worry about personal hygiene? Here's the thing. Staying clean is key to keeping you and yours healthy. Especially when the usual comforts are out the window. When there's no power and you can't just pop over to the dock for every little thing, stopping germs in their tracks becomes job number one. We're talking soap, shampoo, razors, hand sanitizer, chapstick, toothpaste, deodorant, and yes, even laundry and dish soap. Baking soda, too, because that stuff's a jack-of-all-trades. These items don't care about no EMP. They're going to be your best friends for staying healthy. Poor hygiene can lead to all sorts of nasty stuff. Skin issues, dental woes, infections. Plus, keeping clean helps keep spirits up. It's about more than health. It's about feeling human when everything's a mess. But wait, there's more. These hygiene items? They're going to be worth their weight in gold. Money might not mean much when the world's turned upside down, but bartering's going to be big. Imagine trading some soap for a meal or toothpaste for clean water. Sounds crazy, but it could be a reality. So what's the game plan? Stock up. Think about how many folks you're looking after and for how long. Starting with a three-day supply per person is good, but more is better. And don't just throw it all in a closet and forget about it. Keep it organized and stored right, so it's ready to go when you need it. Trust me, in times like those, a little bit of cleanliness can go a long way. Number 10. Tools Non-electric tools will become indispensable for survival due to their durability and independence from the power grid. Tools like knives, axes, hammers, nails, screwdrivers, screws, and wrenches will not be affected by an EMP and will remain functional making them crucial for building, repairs, and day-to-day -day tasks necessary for survival. These basic, non-electronic tools are essential for maintaining infrastructure, creating shelters, repairing equipment, and performing a multitude of tasks that require manual labor. Without access to powered tools, the reliance on these manual tools increases significantly, highlighting their importance in a post-EMP world. The value of these tools extends beyond their utility, in a scenario where electronic devices and machinery are rendered inoperative, the skills to use manual tools effectively can also become a highly regarded asset. Individuals capable of building, fixing, and creating with these tools can play vital roles in their communities, potentially trading their skills and the use of their tools for other essential goods and services. Moreover, the robustness and simplicity of non-electric tools make them ideal for long-term use in uncertain conditions, where the maintenance and repair of more complex machinery might not be possible. The absence of a need for electricity means these tools can be used anywhere and under almost any circumstances, providing flexibility and reliability that electric tools cannot offer in a post-EMP environment. In addition to the practical reasons, there's also the aspect of self-sufficiency that non-electric tools offer. Being able to perform tasks without reliance on power not only ensures that one can continue to work towards survival, but also contributes to a sense of autonomy and resilience in the face of adversity. Thank you for watching.